Okay, we have a jig hook in the vise, and this is the new way to tie on jig hooks. You got to think like a fish, which is totally messed up. No, really, this is just a way to put a bead on hook. Uh, this this fly that we're going to tie is named after the the Kuntosh Club. My buddies uh, that I go to lunch with at work sometimes, uh, old Clint and Scott, we're the Kuntosh Club. If you want to apply for it, you can you can apply for it. I don't know what the qualifications are. Anyway, so it's called the Kuntosh Nymph. Anyway, it's a jig nymph. This is a size 10 fire hole 516 hook. And I'm going to throw on a pretty big bead. This is a 3.8 millimeter bead. And the reason I wanted to put the hook in like this is to show you that's how I put my, my beads on jig hooks. You just kind of slide it over, small hole first, and then I'm going to seat the, the, the hook. And as you can see, that's not, that's not the way that, that this bead should be on. If I flip it upside down the other way, you can see that it sits down a little bit more on that, that hook eye. So most, most uh, slotted jig hooks or slot, I mean slotted beads, um, it's pretty apparent. This one has kind of a bigger opening. So I'm just kind of showing you that's, that's how to do it. If you don't think it's sitting right, rotate it and get it to sit right. Now, I could put some lead underneath the, this uh, bead, but I'm just going to use some thread. And the best way to, to kind of seat the bead is once you have your thread started, and on this fly I'm going to use, what is this, fluorescent orange. And uh, I'm going to kind of put my finger right here as I wrap my thread. And I'm just going to build up enough thread right here, right behind the bead, until I feel the bead stop to wiggle. Not yet. So I've, I've seeded the bead there. And uh, it, usually it takes a lot less thread if you're doing that with a, a smaller hook. But since this is a size 10 and a 3.8 mil bead, it's pretty beefy. Um, so this is a pretty simple nymph. It's designed to be just kind of like a, a trailer. Not a trailer. It's an anchor. Okay, so this one incorporates grizzly micro legs from the old hairlines. And I'm going to do both the tails and the legs out of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a section of it. And I'm going to tie it on. The far side of the hook so your side of the hook and I'll kind of wrap that up a little bit and then I'm going to double this part over and then I'll wrap it back down the other side and what that does is it creates kind of a split tail on it especially if you trim it so this would be like a little stonefly style nymph now for the rib, um, with these Euro flies, if you're going to use any type of flash rib, you've got to counter wrap them with monofilament. And I, I just didn't like doing that. So I'm using Midge Sparkle Braid. And this is root beer. It comes in a whole bunch of different cool colors. But I'm just going to tie that in up, up by the bead and wrap that back to the tails. And that's going to be the, the rib on this fly. So the body is more of my uh, famous mason squirrel that kid shot for me, but it's the most awesome kind of reddish brown color. But you can do this in gray or if you have olive squirrel, that would be a good one, but um, natural. And then if you did like a black rabbit as well would be good. That way you could do a dark stonefly. Anyway, I'm just going to dub some of that on my thread and taper it forward. And as you can see, it's it's really, really buggy stuff on purpose. That's kind of the point of this fly, is just really unruly. So once I've uh, wrapped the whole body with this, I'm going to take the 
the Sparkle Braid. Is that what it's called? Sparkle Braid, yeah. I get the names mixed up. And then I'm going to counter wrap that through the squirrel just to kind of make sure it does stand out and doesn't get sunk in those dubbing wraps. And it just gives it a nice little accent of color or flash. And I'll tie that one off. Now this, this is a technique I've been playing with quite a bit, is kind of making a soft hackle, but out of squirrel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little dubbing loop. And I'm going to use this uh, gator grip tool and make a really short loop. It's probably like an inch and a half. So once your loop and your tool are in place, you grab more of the same stuff that you made the body with. And as you can see, it's it's pretty long fibered stuff. This is stuff that I have shaved off of, of the squirrel. So I know that it's got some long fibers in there. This is about 50 times too much. I just wanted to show you. So I'm just going to take some and build a really super sparse dubbing loop out of it. And that's going to take a little bit more practice than anything else on this fly. But as you can see, I've got this little dubbing loop formed. And then I'll just twist it up. And those guard hairs make a really nice buggy brush. So I'm just going to take that loop and wrap it forward. And the bead should push the fibers back. So I've got the collar made. I'm going to bring stuff back a little bit and make a little band of thread. And the reason I do that is I'm going to tie on more rubber legs now. So I'm going to take this same piece. I'm going to just double it over. And if you double over those legs and just do two loose wraps right on top, you can grab one leg and pull it to one side and the other on the other side. So that's basically it. Um, so I'll trim that off, trim the loop. And to make sure all those legs are the same size, if you just push them all forward and trim them off all at the same time, now all four of those are the same size. But I probably want the front legs a little bit shorter than the back legs, so I'll give those an extra little trim. So that's about how I want the, the nymph to sit. Anyway. Like I said, it's a pretty simple fly. All right, now all I'm gonna do is whip finish. And you will wanna dab this with a little bit of head cement and there's a little pocket. See the little part of the slot right there? I usually just dab the head cement right in there and you call it good. Anyway, that's the Countach Nymph and it crushes them. <laughs>